maybe you could think about it in a different way that won't also be robbing your kiddo of the joy and excitement they have about this next stage. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome back to the podcast. I'm excited to record with you today. I um, spent all of last week in Florida at Bougie on the Beach with Ari. I turned 53 in Florida. Ari turned 10. We do have her um, like a slumber party, her slumber party at our house tonight to celebrate her birthday. Uh, Jason and Ava were serving on a missions trip with our church. I took Ava on that same missions trip last year and Noah several years ago um, during the same week. And then, you know, the boys are grown. And so they were doing their own thing. And um, when I was on my way back from Florida, I um, sometimes if I have some travel time, I'll do like a and a box on Instagram. And by the way, just to make sure like pro tip here, if ever you see somebody say something on Instagram, like ask me anything, and then there's like a box below it, you're supposed to type the question in the box. It's interesting because I think like three quarters of the people ask questions that way and nobody can see them but me. So it's not like anybody else can see them. But, um, but like a fourth of the people always just send me the questions, the DMs. Well, one of the questions that I got, and I always say like, you know, ask me questions about business or ask me questions about life. Um, I am a certified life coach. I've had my life coaching certification for two years. And so I always, you know, business, life, like whatever, just don't ask me why I wait. And um, I'll see if I can answer it for you, especially if I'm in a, a travel day. And so one of the questions that I got was, Jennifer, how do I manage, and I'm reading it word for word here, how do I manage kids who are moving on to college slash my new season of life? Or maybe she meant their new season of life just as new season of life. So how do I manage kids moving on to college slash new season of life? And that's an appropriate question because um, we are, you know, in the beginning of August, which is just like mind blowing to me um, that, that this year is starting out, you know, it's just going so fast. I was trying to tell the ladies in my inner circle yesterday, the older you get, I promise the faster it goes. So for those of you that are younger than me, you're younger than 53, just know every year speeds by quicker and quicker. And I'm like, Lord, how do I, how do we hit like cruise control at a slower speed? And I just, I don't know the answer to that, but I did know the answer to her question in terms of like what's worked well for Jason and I. So I know that normally I talk about business, I talk about biblical things, but today I want to talk about um, launching kiddos. And, and so her question was, how do I manage? Which to me signifies that she's concerned about how she's going to deal with a kiddo moving on to college. When she says new season of life, I'm not sure if she means like new season for her or new season for her kiddo, but either way, it's a new season, right? And um, I have some pretty strong feelings about this topic. Um, I think it's important that you know that our son Noah is 22, living on his own in um, Scottsdale, Arizona. Our son Easton is 20, getting ready to finish his last year at Grand Canyon University in Phoenix, Arizona. And he did just get engaged last month um, to the love of his life. And so I will be the mother of a groom next summer. And um, Jason and I talked in a recent podcast episode. I have to look it up for you. Let me see if I can look it up for you real quick. Um, it was, a, it was an episode about just like life. Um, but we talked about how I think that him and I are good launchers <laughs> and by launching, I mean like, you know, putting kids out into the world. Okay. So let me see if I can find that episode for you, because I do think that some of you would enjoy it. All right. You can go back and look at dun, dun, dun. Okay. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Um, where's it at? Where's it at? It's going to be episode 447. Okay, so go to episode 447. And so on that episode, Jason and I were talking about the fact that I think we're good launchers. And, and I'm really proud about that because, proud about that, proud of that, because I feel like launching kids into the world is one of those things that um, you can either go way in one direction or, you know, way in the other. Um, I feel like it's one of those things that directly impacts just the peace and the joy, um, both for you and whoever you're launching and in your home. And, um, you know, my, my gifting is the gift of exhortation, which is what I think makes me a good business coach and why I deal so much with mindset, because, um, this is a topic I want to exhort you moms on, which means I want to cheerlead, you know, slash teach slash share with you some things that have worked for us. 
uh, because I think it's going to be helpful for some of you. Now, if you do not have kiddos that you are launching in this season, do me a hot solid, go ahead and share this podcast right now to someone who you know who is. Um, and if you're listening to this podcast, that's great. If you prefer to watch podcasts, flip over to YouTube and watch me on YouTube. I have straightish hair today. I got my hair done last night. It's in a, a messy pony on the top of my head. I'm still wearing my workout clothes. Um, I did get my eyebrows done last night. So they're a little darker than what they should be, but we're, we're fine, right? We're fine. We're, we're okay. Uh, I still want to give you some really good tips today, but if you like, here is, isn't it funny how we consume content? Because as a creative, I am visually stimulated. If any of the rest of you are in the design space, the home space, the DIY space, you're probably stimulated visually as well. If you just cannot really get into podcasts or you find yourself wanting to listen and you don't go see if the podcasts are on YouTube, even if you're just setting your phone like next to you as you're doing makeup in the morning or something, it's, it's that visual stimulation sometimes that makes things land for us. So flip over to YouTube if you want. You can watch me wonder why my eyebrows look like Groucho Marx. And we're going to talk about launching kids. All right. Jason sometimes, and I talked about this on that life episode with him on 447 about how he jokes that I, I'm dead inside. And it's not that I'm dead inside, but I try hard not to have a whole lot of big emotions around my kiddos that I am concerned would affect them in a negative fashion. Okay. Um, also I'm just not an emotional person. Um, and part of that comes from, I think, leaving home at a pretty young age, you learn how to just pull up your big girl panties and take care of business. Part of that is an Enneagram three. So we just don't show a lot of emotion. Part of that's just, you know, past trauma that I've been through as a child, um, where emotions, you know, you're not really able to express. So when you look at all those things, I'm just not somebody who gets super emotional. The day Jason and I got married, he cried like a baby. If he was sitting here right next to me, he would tell you that 27 years ago, the day we got married, I had not even a tear. And my husband just wept on stage. Um, we have taken Noah to college. I didn't cry. We've taken Easton to college. I didn't cry. Easton just got engaged. I didn't cry. Um, when my kids, we have three of our four children have driver's licenses. I didn't cry. Like, uh, I will cry at things that are kind of weird. But I often don't cry on things that seem to be um, really important, <laughs> where a lot of women would or a lot of parents would. I do find, though, that a lot of times like I will I will express emotion and I'll have big emotions, but sometimes I delay it until it feels like a safer time for me to share them or I just want to share it you know, privately with Jason. Um, and so. I did not cry for a lot of the big milestones for our children. And one of the reasons is I'm not an overly emotional person. Another reason though, is because I think Jason and I have loved every stage and every age that our children have gone through. Um, and I think that society really wants for you to be overly emotional at times um, about things concerning our kiddos. Okay. So let me give you some examples. That's probably a bad way to phrase that, but I can remember when we had kids and everybody's like, oh, the terrible twos, the terrible twos. So I was kind of like bracing myself for awful twos. And then I felt like, you know what, why am I doing this? Why am I bracing myself for this? To, like, why am I preparing for hard? It doesn't have to be hard. It could be wild. It could be crazy. It could be a lot of things, but I don't have to view it as hard. And so I, I just remember Jason and I always like thinking, I wish people would stop calling it the terrible twos. Then every one of our kids, as they've come into the teenage years, you know, society wants you to think, oh, teenagers are just so hard. No, they're just different. In a lot of ways, they're so much easier than toddlers. They wipe their own bottoms. They've got their own opinions. You're able to have, you know, more like adult style conversations. We have loved having teenagers. I know when we had two boys and we were praying so hard for Ava Grace, um, I am one of, I have two brothers. I have four stepbrothers. Jason's father is one of nine boys. My biological father who I've never met is one of, um, wait, Jason's dad is one of six boys. My biological father who I've never met um, is one of nine boys. And so when I say we, I, I'm the only girl, um, we had two boys, we had two miscarriages and we were praying so hard for Ava baby. And people would say, oh, but girls are so hard. Girls are so hard. You know what? Girls are just different. They're just, they're wired differently as they're supposed to be. Um, you know, and so I think that society wants for us to like expect things to be hard when it comes to our children. And so I see this on social media in particular right now about launching kids into college and things. And, and it's, um, you know, I see there's a lot of emotional moms on there and, and that's okay. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. 
but sometimes I wonder, are they emotional because they're emotional or are they emotional because society tells them, you know what you should do? You should really be panicking right now about your kids leaving. You should really be freaking out. You should really be locking yourself in your bedroom and don't come up for air for the next couple of days because it's going to be so hard seeing their empty chair at the dinner table. And I just think it's really all about perspective, friends. I really, really do. Because how you, and if you're married, um, you know, how you and your spouse decide to view your kiddo leaving, whether it's leaving for college or leaving to get married, whatever else, like how you decide to look at that, how you frame that changes everything. It'll change everything. For sure, having launched two children, I can tell you that there is an adjustment period. It's going to be an adjustment for you as a mother. It's going to be an adjustment for you and your spouse as a couple, if you happen to be married. And it's going to be adjustment for the whole family. Um, I know that, you know, at times I've been more concerned about the girls when both boys have left versus myself and Jason. It's definitely an adjustment. So I'm not minimizing that. But an adjustment doesn't have to be bad. Can somebody just tweet that? Can you quote me on that? No, I'm kidding. Adjustments don't have to be bad, right? An adjustment can actually be good. I, for one, because I'm a super creative. So for those of you that are super creatives, I feel like the more that I just share with you, like my aha moments about myself, my hope is, is that it gives you some sort of freedom because a lot of you ladies, <coughs> excuse me, you're wired so much like me, but you don't understand why you do and feel and behave the way that you do. Okay. So as a super creative, I love change. I want to change the outside color of our house right now. I have a bathroom with wallpaper and that wallpaper is less than five years old. I'd like to change that. I have chairs that I want to change out at our house in Florida. Like I love change. I had this aha moment. One of the last times I was at our rental property in Florida, that the reason, one of the reasons I think I love the beach so much is a, I love what water does to me. And if you've never listened to my podcast about water, um, you should totally go listen to it. It's called something like why we have our best ideas in the shower. But I just told my team, I really want to change that to why do we get our best ideas around water? Go listen to that because water has so much therapeutic um, and creative energy to it. And it's, it's super interesting because both biology and the Bible support the same thing when it comes to us being around water. So I was telling my husband that like, I love being around water because of those factors, but also because the beach changes every day. The sunrise looks different every day. You guys, sometimes there's not a cloud in the sky. Other times it's gray and it's fascinating. The beach looks different every day. Sometimes when I wake up, the water is in, sometimes it's out. Sometimes there's like a ledge of sand. The water itself looks different. Sometimes it is just clear as glass. We're able to paddleboard right off the beach. Other times it's a double red flag and you wouldn't let anybody get into that water. So I love change. If you love change, adjustment periods with launching kids doesn't have to feel awful. It can actually feel exciting if you'll let it yourself like explore and think about it in that way. Now, again, you can be both. You can grieve the change of the family dynamics and also be excited about this new stage. You can be sad that, you know, you're going to miss a human that, you know, for most of you, we, we birthed out of our very bodies, right? I mean, I've birthed three of my four. Um, the other one birthed out of my heart as you other adoptive moms have. Um, but, you know, so, so there is like a, a grief that goes with that, but know that that is normal. And that doesn't have to be accompanied with depression and sadness and boohooing and, you know, um, and, and just like feeling like it's going to last forever. Yes, you may grieve how your family has shifted, but also that adjustment and that shifting can be super exciting. It really can. Um, I know that Easton, you know, I said, got engaged in July we're in August right now. And this will be my first time, you know, marrying off a kiddo. And, um, the truth is I had more feelings on that day of his engagement than I did with any of our kids leaving, moving 22 hours across the country, anything else, because I know in my knower, um, just that our family dynamics are going to change again. One of the things that nobody told me about launching kids into college is, is it, is that I wouldn't necessarily miss the human so much because guys, we have FaceTime now we have phone calls, we have social media, we, we have ways of still communicating and understanding what's happening with our kids, right? It was different back when I went to college in 1989. All right. It was a pay phone home 
every Sunday night for 10 minutes while I put quarters, you know, in the payphone on my, the floor of my dorm. So it's different now. Okay. So, but what I think that I instinctively have been able to figure out as a mom is what, that I wasn't necessarily grieving their presence as much as grieving the understanding that our family as we knew it is now changed forever. It just is. Whether they're leaving for college or just moving across the country or getting engaged, the dynamics will change. So it's never going to be again, just hashtag I would party a six. And by the way, I am so excited about Easton getting engaged. I'm so excited that I get to gain a daughter-in-law. I'm so excited about them getting married. But there's like this like nostalgic sadness to like, oh man, they're never going to be my babies again. You know, and, and it's almost like, I remember the first time that I realized our son Easton, the one that just got engaged. I remember the first time that it dawned on me. I haven't picked him up and held him in a while. You know, he was seven, eight, nine years old. I don't even remember. And I thought to myself, shoot, I can't remember the last time I held my baby. Like, you know, just all of a sudden one day you realize they're too heavy and you never pick them up again. Like things have changed, things have shifted. And I, I remember with Ava, when we replaced the small little girl hangers in her closet with big girl hangers, for some reason that got me in my feels. I was like, oh, she's not like, she's never going to be that baby again. And it wasn't that I was like sad for the change that we were entering. It was more like looking back on the memories of our family and being like, oh man, those were precious times and we don't get to go back. And so when Easton got engaged, I, that morning I got up early. I looked at my husband. I'm like, baby, I just need to, I just need to take a quick walk around the block and take the dogs. I got a lot of big feelings and, um, you know, quick 12 minute walk. And I was good to go. I just had to kind of think through some things and really decide how am I going to look at him getting engaged? Am I going to look at it as I'm losing a son or instead, am I going to look at it? Like, this is so exciting. This is what we have raised them to do. I couldn't be more thrilled about, you know, this next stage of life that he's going into and the girl that he's engaged to and them going into it together. They both love Jesus. They both love each other. I mean, it's, I couldn't ask for anything different. And, and yet my heart was sad. And so a couple of weeks after they got engaged um, and, and the engagement was phenomenal. The party was great, all the things, but I called my friend, Lisa Bevere. If you guys don't know Lisa, if you're not following her on social media, you're just missing out on one of our great treasures in this country right now. So you need to go follow Lisa. Lisa and um, her husband, John have four adult boys. All four are married, all four serving the Lord, all four in really great relationship with them. So I called Lisa and I said, Hey, you've done this four times. Like, tell me, like, tell me as the mom of the groom, like, what is my responsibility? What do I need to do? Not in terms of like financial, but like, how do I make sure that as a mom of the groom, I'm not overstepping boundaries. Like those were my questions for her. Right. And, um, and we talked through that and she gave me some really great perspective. It's really important to me that I honor, you know, um, the girl that Easton is marrying Bella and, and her mom and what they want to do. And, and, you know, that I just really had to kind of remain where I need to, in terms of being the mother of the group. And so anyhow, Lisa and I are talking, we're talking just about kids getting older and, you know, some of the feelings that come with that. And she, she said this thing that she told me, she told her husband years ago. Um, and I asked her if I could quote it on this podcast. She said, absolutely. And so Lisa, I love you for that. But she said, she can remember telling John Bevere, her husband, I respect our boys as men, but I carry them forever in my heart as children. And then I was like, oh, oh, okay. Let me say that again. I respect our boys as men, but I carry them forever in my heart as children. And I thought that is it, right? That's why some of you mamas right now are on the struggle bus with your kids leaving because, because you're still regarding them in your heart as children, which I think as mothers, um, God has just wired us to do that. I think he just has. And so, yes, there may be a period of grief, but you could also really reframe that into getting excited about the next season. I can remember when Noah Allwood, our oldest, when he got his driver's license, and there was people that tried to say, oh boy, you know, you're going to be so worried when they get their license. Friends, I was not worried in the least. I mean, I was praying a hedge protects them about them. I was praying, you know, God be with them. Let angels be in their vehicle. Let him not drive like a knucklehead. Um, help him to, you know, keep his wits about him. Let's also go ahead and use life 360. Like I was doing all the things, but also like, I was so excited to be like, Hey, can you go to the grocery store for me? Cause you know, I don't do that. <laughs> hey, Noah, could you pick your sister up from school? Like I was so excited to have another driver in the house back then 
Jason worked a lot of hours. He was gone a lot. And so I was super excited for that. What I didn't know would happen when my kiddo got a driver's license, and some of you need to send this podcast episode right now to a girlfriend who's got a kiddo about to get their license. What no one told me is that when your kiddos get a driver's license, then they really are just, it, it's not that you, I was grieving that. What I was sad about is that they were just no longer home. Each of my three, um, our three children that have got licenses. It's just that then, you know, they're just going to be gone. They're just going to be on the move. And I do think that this is one of God's ways of preparing us for when they launch at 18 or, or whenever they're leaving home because they've been launching since 16. You know, by the time your kiddos are 16, you're really not parenting them as much as you are just like managing that relationship, giving them advice, hoping you've done everything correctly. Kind of your teaching is really kind of over at that point. I mean, it is and it isn't, but I think that's one of God's ways. Remember how at the end of your pregnancy, if you carried, you know, your kiddos, you can't sleep anymore. That's, I think how God prepares us for newborns because you're not going to be sleeping anyway. And so I think that one of the ways God prepares us mothers for kiddos being launched or leaving for college is at 16, they get a license for the majority of them. And then they're just gone more. They've got a, a taste of freedom and we just got to like hope and pray that all goes well. And I wish that somebody had kind of warned me about that, but Jason, and I've been very intentional and, and about being very excited whenever our kids are hitting those milestones whether it's them getting a license, whether it's them moving to college, moving across the country, getting engaged. Um, because we know, and I need somebody to hear this today, okay? Friend, your kiddos are going to move on, whether you do emotionally or not. And I know that that hurts. I know that that hurts. But your kid, that's what they're supposed to do, okay? And, and, and by the way, like this is going to hurt when I say this too, but you've known since the day that that kiddo was born that there would be a day when they left home. Like this is not catching you by surprise, right? So like, instead of like all the dramatics and, and all the things on social media, like maybe you could think about it in a different way that won't also be robbing your kiddo of the joy and excitement they have about this next stage. Listen, your kids feel enough pressure. Why am I getting all heated? Your children have enough stress from social media, from their peers, from the world, what are you going to do when you grow up? What are you going to do when you grow up? Where are you going to go to college? What are you going to do? What do you mean you're not going to college? Well, what are you going to do? What do you want to be when you grow up? Like they get that from all angles. What they don't need is more of that from mom. What they don't need is to see their parents boohooing, freaking out in the fetal position. And because then they feel like they have to manage your emotions and try to help you with your emotions simultaneously while they're trying to deal with their own crap. And so like, you know, I was talking to somebody the other day and I'm like, I know, but friend, like don't rob your baby of, of something that they're already feeling apprehensive about because anytime, especially, I mean, think about you when you were 18, right? Like you think, you know, everything. And yet you also simultaneously know, shoot, I don't know anything. <laughs> and their kids always want their moms. They always want their parents. And so don't rob your babies of this next step. I'd love for you just to reframe them leaving in a way that they don't have to worry about mom in addition to worrying about their own transition. They're already worried about roommates. They're already wor worried about if they're going to college, their class schedule. They're already worried about, are they taking enough credits? Not enough. They're already worried about the cost of things. And so I don't want my children to ever feel like, and now I got to be worried about mom too. I'm not going to burden my kids in that way. I'm just not. And so. I just want you to consider reframing how you're looking at the change your family is about to go through. I want to uh, tell you like this story that I heard one time, because as a mom, like you really do set the temperature of the home. Okay. And your family will feed off of you. I have noticed, you know, in, in our marriage of 27 years, like if I am cranky, suddenly Jason gets cranky and I'm like, where did that come from? You were fine this morning. He's just feeding off me. And the kids do the same thing because the moms usually set the temperature for the home. Okay. So I remember hearing this story once, since we are the temperature setters about how, um, like your kids, your whole family, really, 
will kind of almost watch you <laughs> because you set the precedence for um, how to deal with change in the household. Okay. I mean, dad, if you know, dad's there also, but moms, especially. All right. So here was a story that I heard one time that I was like, wow, this is, this is really good. Um, and I think one thing that we, cause I'm gonna tell you the story, but I think one thing we can all be certain about and all one thing we all can agree on here is that life is full of change. Isn't it like, just when you think you got something figured out, God, like allow something to come in or something shifts or changes. And then you're, you know, you're having to like, um, reset and regroup and all the things again. And so your kids need to have an example in the household of how do we deal with change? How do we deal with job loss? How do we deal with pregnancy loss? How do we deal with bringing in a broken little girl six years ago into our family? How do we deal with Noah leaving to college? How do we deal with now East and going further across the country? Like, how do we deal with the dynamics of things changing? Because they take that, they take that, and that's like the example that they take with them. And with kids, like more is caught than taught, okay? So here's a story. I heard this story one time that like, if you are a nervous flyer, um, then things like turbulence, you know, you're not a fan, okay? So can, can, I'm not a fan, not a fan of turbulence. Um, I love to fly, but I'm not a fan of turbulence. Well, I, so I heard this story that was basically like, you know, what most people do if they're on an airplane that is a very bumpy flight, if there's a lot of turbulence, if there's a storm outside, if, you know, uh, things are bouncing up and down, a lot of times what we all tend to do is we look for the, like the, the flight attendants, right? I, I always do. I'm like, always, I'm like, look at, I'm like, okay, you know, I'm up looking. I'm like, where's she at? Where's he at? And, and I'm looking to see, is their face showing panic or not? Because if they're still standing up and they're still serving, you know, ginger ale to people, and uh, my husband always gets like the Bloody Mary mixes, um, just the mix, no alcohol. I don't know why. I'm a ginger ale girl. He's a Bloody Mary. We couldn't be any more different. But if, um, so if they're still like serving drinks and things, then I'm like, okay, I guess they're not worried. I guess if they're not worried, then I'm not worried. <laughs> I guess, you know, I mean, I'm looking at their faces and if they're not worried, that's probably a good sign. I don't need to be worried either, right? Listen, your kids watch you in the same way. And if you are terrified about them going to college, like they're watching your body language, your face, what you're saying, what you're posting, all the things. They're they're watching us the same way that we watch like the flight attendants on a bumpy plane. So are you are you showing your kids that you're freaking out about them leaving? Are you showing them that you're excited? You've got a lot of confidence in them. You've watched them really mature. You've watched them grow up. You are proud of who they have grown into. You are excited for this next stage of their life. Or are they watching you freak out? They're looking. Are you, are you looking forward to this next stage of life, both for them and for you? Or are you absolutely dreading it? Because they will pick up on those cues. And that's what they're being taught to feel too. Okay? You know, are, are we sharing our emotions to the point where we're making our kids almost feel guilty about growing up and moving on, which by the way, is exactly what they're supposed to do. God has only loaned them to us for a short season. We all knew that they were gonna go at some point. So I'm not saying that you can't be sad. I'm not saying for you to not show any emotion. Sadness is a very real emotion. I think it's wise and your kids need to know how to deal with sadness too. But I also think that we can, we can remember that sad isn't bad. And we can be sad and full of joy and peace at the same time. We can be sad that we're going to miss their presence in the home every day, but also be so excited. Sad doesn't have to be bad. Sad just is. It just is. Listen, the Bible talks about there being seasons under heaven or in uh, seasons under the sun for, no, seasons in heaven for everything under the sun. There you go. And there are going to be seasons for both you and I, where just the dynamics of our families, they change. And one of the sayings that I've told my kids, you can ask them, I'm like, kids, if you can't change your circumstance, and, and then they'll answer for me, change your attitude. <laughs> if you can't change your circumstances, because your kiddos are going to go at some point, then change your attitude about it. It's all in how you're going to look at it. I'm going to give you just a real quick refresher on what like the life coaching model looks like, because for some of you, this is really going to land. Okay. When, when it comes to like coaching yourself on how to behave better, <laughs> <laughs> on how to think differently about a situation. Here's what you need to remember. Um, how you think about something is then going to produce how you feel. So first you think, then you feel. 
however you feel then produces your behaviors and your actions. And then that dictates how things go. Okay. So you first think, then you feel, then you act and then you see what the results are. So if you're hating where your current results are, you're in the fetal position, all those things. Well, is it like back that bus up? Is it because you're thinking about this new season as loss, as awful, as a horrible life change? Because if that's the stuff you're thinking, then you're going to feel awful. You're going to feel sadness. You're going to feel grief. You're going to feel dread. And then you're going to further behave out of that. There's going to be crying. There's going to be, you know, you're either not eating or you're eating all your emotions. You know, and so that's, and then, and so then things, that's how things spin out of control. If instead you would just decide to think, because at first we think, right, this is a new season. This is a new season for them. This is a new season for me. This is a new season for me and Jason. This is a new season for our whole family. If you can think about it in that way, then you can almost begin to feel excited. And then you behave as an excited person. <laughs> And then you get different results. And so I'm not saying to fake it, but I am saying that you and you alone are fully in control of your thought life. This is why the Bible says that we're to take every thought captive because how we think then dictates how we feel and how we behave. So I'm not saying that you shouldn't feel sad or apprehensive, but can you at the same time think of a different, like a reframe, like, Hey, this is going to be so good for them. Now I get to see them launch. I get to see them like living maybe in a way that I didn't get to. I mean, when I look at like Noah right now, he's bouncing all over, um, uh, Arizona. He's, you know, trying some different, um, industries. He just got back from like four days in Vegas. I'm like, baby, go do all of that. At 21, I had a mortgage and a lot of responsibility. And he doesn't. So there's a part of me that I'm like, go, I mean, have fun, try things. I'm excited for you. It's not that you shouldn't have big feelings, but your kiddos also have big feelings and don't make them feel responsible for yours as well as their own. Okay. We all knew these days would come where they're going to leave to some capacity. Friends, you have equipped them for this. You have launched them in a way that shows them you believe in them and that you're going to be okay. So they don't have to worry about you too. And that you're so excited for their future. Don't burden them with your grief. If you can, you have girlfriends, you have a spouse. If you're married, you have your own mom that you can call, but don't burden your kiddos. All right. Launch them in a way that they're excited to. I was telling my girlfriend, Samantha, this last week when we were in Florida, you know, one of the other reasons I, I think that I don't, I don't get super emotional about my kids leaving is I really enjoy spending time with my husband <laughs> without children. And, you know, we were about to be empty nesters in two years. And then we of course um, adopted a little girl a few years ago. And so now we're back to, you know, we still have an elementary student, but turns out I really love spending time with him. And um, turns out I'm also kind of greedy for my husband's attention. I love his undivided attention and I get it frequently. And I'm not rushing our daughters to leave. I'm not rushing that at all. But I am already telling myself that I'm looking forward to this next season when it's just him and I again, because it was just him and I for five years. And sometimes when I do see moms, you know, absolutely freaking out about their kids leaving, I wonder, okay, did they almost like make motherhood into an idol? which I think, um, is a real conversation that needs to happen sometimes, um, or sometime. And I could, I should maybe do a podcast on that. If you've ever liked for me to do a podcast about, uh, turning like your children into an idol, let me know where the kids are basically running the household. You're running from event to event. You have no time for your spouse. The truth is like nine times out of 10 kids are going to leave someday. It's just going to be you and spouse again. And so sometimes I wonder, did, did those moms and those dads, have they laid down everything for their children and made like being a parent into an idol? Do they not have any like interests and passions and pastimes of their own? You know, is the only thing that they were really living for and doing things for during the day was it their kids? Do they not have any interests outside of their kids? Do they not enjoy spending time with their spouse? Do they have, you know, do they not even know what to do with themselves with no kids around? Those are just some of the ponderings I have. So listen, as we finish up here and after launching two of our four kids, I can tell you that it's so cool to have adult children. Like, let me just give a big like virtual hug through YouTube, through the podcast app for those of you who are getting ready to launch kids. Um, having adult kids is so cool. You can have adult conversations. You can do adult things. Like I love this stage. 
<laughs> um, and it's funny because I can remember when we went from, you know, the baby to the toddler, there was a part of me. It's like, I really don't want to go back to baby. Those were a lot of sleepless nights. My body was ripped in half. I didn't know who I was baby. What, you know, and then they go from toddler to, um, grade school age. And you're like, okay, like, I really, I, I like this stage too. I'm glad that they're now in school and not home, you know, all day, every day. I mean, I love that too, but I love this. And then they become teenagers. And you're like, you know what? Those people who said teenagers are awful. Well, absolutely wrong. I think I love having teenagers. Well, I'm telling you the same thing happens when you launch a kiddo. If you will just prepare your heart and reframe your thoughts about it, you will in a couple months look back and go, oh my goodness, this is such a cool stage too. Watching them fly, watching them do all the things, watching them like tap into what they've learned at home, watching them stand on their own feet, watching them cook <laughs> for the first time. I mean, it's uh, God bless you, Easton Allwood, who's going to be, you know, uh, he's going to be editing this YouTube video, but you know, um, he did not get his cooking skills from his father. He got them from his mother and set off a fire alarm, um, for the whole building. The whole building had, <laughs> they all had to file out on campus last year because he burnt eggs. And this, I mean, he comes back that so naturally that apple does not fall far from that tree, but listen, I promise you moms, it keeps getting better and better and better. Okay. Yes. Changes are going to take some getting used to. And yes, there's going to be some grief. But sad doesn't mean bad. And um, find ways to keep yourself busy. Find somebody safe, you know, spouse if you're married, girlfriends that you can chat with about it. Send those kiddos off in a good way. All right. They're going to need to tap back into that, you know, because they've got a lot of, um, of change coming up too. So, all right. I hope that this was super helpful for somebody today. I hope you still love me. <laughs> I hope you're not thinking I was being too harsh. Um, but at times, I think it is just helpful to see a whole nother perspective and hear another perspective. And I'm not saying that Jason and I have done it perfect, but I do think that we've done it well. And I think if you were to ask our children that they would agree with that. So again, forward this to someone who's in a season of change with their children. They've either got a kiddo leaving home, going to a trade school, leaving for college, et cetera. I hope that this is a blessing to some other mothers. And um, I hope you know that I love you and I'm rooting for you. All right. God bless. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye. Easton, is it okay that I just told everybody almost burnt down your building at college. <laughs>